All right, and welcome everybody uh, here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this later for our next deck, which is going to be Mardu Midrange. So this is basically the Mardu Angels decks that uh, I like to play. Um, but instead of playing the Angels, we're trying a little bit of a different package. So this is you know, almost exactly like Mardu Angels, but instead we got, um, instead of uh, Resplendent Angel, we got Midnight Reaper. Instead of Aurelia, we have Rekindling Phoenix. And instead of Lyra, we have Hellkite and Angrath. Instead of like those and um, Angel of Grace. I think the, the, the biggest reason to play this over uh, Mardu Angels is you're going to be uh, slightly better against Control. Midnight Reaper gets you card advantage and Grath um, takes away their cards. And basically the big thing here is we get Rekindling Phoenix. If you're just here for our last deck with Team or Creatures, we saw how good Rekindling Phoenix is. Basically this card is just amazing. Uh, Seraph of the Scales um, is really, really good too. So we have we have... We get to double up on these four mana, four three flyers that, uh, you know, if they die, um, gain you a little value. Either the Phoenix dies and you get the elemental creature token that can return the Phoenix, or the Seraph of the Scale dies and you get some afterlife token. So both these cards are very strong, and so we're doubling up on those and having eight total of those here. Um, and then... Uh, I'm going with some Hellkites to kind of go with the Flyers. I certainly thought about Eldest Reborn in this slot. Um, Doom Whisper is another option, though. Also, uh, I kind of wanted a Mana Sink, which is why I have the Hellkite here. But those are some other things to be, you know, other cards to be uh, considering uh, for this kind of slot. Eldest Reborn um, or Doom Whisper. Or you could just play Lyras. You know, if you just don't want to go with the entire Angel package, but maybe you just want a couple Lyras, you know, they go with like the Seraph of the Scales. And so on, if you have more aggro um, in your metagame. We got the Honor Guards to stop uh, to stop the Soul Tide decks. Uh, Honor Guard does not do anything with Riot. Riot is not an Enter the Battlefield trigger. So Honor Guard does not stop Riot whatsoever. Um, and yeah, Hawkeye for the burn and everything. Um, so there we go. We still, have, we still have a good sideboard against aggro where we have like Deafening Clarions. Uh, which are real good against aggro, and uh, Lyra's in there as well. Um, same with, like, Settles against Sultai, Theater, Duress, and Spyglass against Control. So we're going to try out some Mardu midrange. All the decks contain Angrath whenever they can. Angrath's just a good card. It's a good card, and it's been it's been very impressive um, in this format. So yeah, playing it quite a bit. Uh, next deck is four color discard. That that deck is going to be another Angrath deck. But then we're going to play Rakdos Aggro, and that deck. Yeah, that deck has Angrath in it, too. Okay, so I guess our next three decks do have Angrath in it. The Rakdos Aggro only has it in the sideboard, though. Um, this is tough. This is tough. This hand is awesome if we draw another two or three lands. Hey, Soul Farmer. But if we don't draw another two or three lands, this hand is really bad. What do y'all think about this one? On the draw, I would keep this for sure. I'm not so sure about on the play. It's going to be tougher on the play. Yeah, I don't like Rat Colony Ducks and Singleton either. I, that just goes away from the spirit of Singleton. We have one keep. Or we have three keeps, one mole. I did, I did earlier today kind of go through the Selesnya control deck and take a look at that one again. Um, yeah, that was some fun jank that we had like a, a three-hour league with. Uh, 
I didn't really see anything from the new set that I want to add to it. Um, I don't think I don't think there was anything from the new set to add to it, honestly. But I I think I'm gonna I'm gonna try playing I'm gonna play the deck again uh, soon. Um, maybe like Tuesday. So do I play 4-drop, or do I mortify their their Wilderness Reclamation next turn? Let's play 4-drop. That didn't work out too well. This is why we play Angrath in all of our decks. Your crew it's pretty good. <laughs> we also get to draw a card with Midnight Reaper. Sacrifice the creature, draw a card. And they're at one. Uh, Angrath was going to kill him. So it's Tithe Taker, Midnight Reaper. Um, there's, there's some good changes in the newest update. Uh, overall, I'm kind of disappointed, though expecting more. Uh, I'm expect especially disappointed in this deck builder. <laughs> Is that even legal? <laughs> All right, Duress comes on in and uh, Spyglass for Ascanta. Honor Guard can go on out. Um, and then I can probably just trim to, oh, I just take out Lava Coils. That's fine. I guess Lava Coil may be better than Contempt. Alright, that's fine. Theater of Horrors. What do I think of Theater of Horrors? Do I want to play Theater of Horrors over other Lava Coils? I think I like the ping ability of Theater Horrors. I don't know, it's pretty slow. Yeah, history is definitely better than theater because like we're like theater is pretty slow. Like we have to be fast. Oh, I forgot to put in the new duress. Oh man, that could cost us. Our opponents are going to top deck so well after the duress now. We're going to cast a duress and they're going to have like nothing in their hand and then they're going to draw the perfect card off the top. Alright, I don't need two lava coils in my opener. Thanks, giraffes. Yeah, birthday, birthday's tomorrow. Um, yes, yeah, so we're doing 12-hour birthday stream tomorrow. No, Kai's Wrath is an, is an amazing first pick and draft. Take it, like, every time.
Well, never mind. I'm glad I have two lava coils now. Go, Tithe Tickers, go! Um... Angrath could get countered, I suppose. I really don't want Angrath to get countered. So we'll throw the Tithe Taker out there. Ugh. Do they have Nexus here? Okay, no, they have that thing. All right, well, good. They can't. They can't uh, counter Angrath now uh, because with Tithe Taker, they just don't. They won't have the mana. Even if they have like, you know, three mana counter Tithe Taker. Well, I guess You're like they could have had specifically no Spell Pierce fire, to no counter steel. that, but you know, I don't think their deck really plays Spell Pierce. All right, so we're gonna kind of sit behind Angrath. Um, attack with one. Do I just attack with both? No, attack with one. Because of Nexus of Fate. Yeah, well, they, they can't cast Root Snare right now. With, with two Tithe Takers out, they couldn't cast Root Snare. Kill ooze, mortify ooze, steal other ooze, attack for six. Certainly killing ooze. Your crew for my freedom? A fair price. Let's attack for four. Don't think it's really that necessary to attack with the tithe taker. I'm glad we kept all the lava coils and mortifies and stuff in. Joker and the thief in the night. No fire, no steel. So do I kill Wilderness Reclamation or search for Escanta? I think Escanta. I can kind of like wait for them to tap out and tap like all their mana and then blow up the Wilderness Reclamation on their turn. But yeah, we'll just get rid of Escanta. No, I'm not gonna attack here. If I if I attack here, 
they just cast their root snare. Um, but then the the three three can kill Angrath. I I want to protect Angrath. And so even if they have like a nexus, I want to be able to have both blockers in case a nexus of fate. I have another Azkanta. Uh, Should have destroyed Wilderness Reclamation. Because that's the thing. Without Reclamation, Azkanta, they still don't have like a ton of mana to do stuff. Without Reclamation. I should have destroyed Reclamation. Because they just, they just don't have, they don't have the mana to cast, like to go find Nexus and cast it with Azkanta. I should have destroyed Reclamation. That was a big mistake. You best start thinking fast. You're on your own. Game's not necessarily over, but it's pretty close. All right, next time, all the people in chat that said Ascanta, don't do that. Destroy. Do not kill Ascanta. Destroy Reclamation, because Ascanta still takes four mana to activate. And you don't get all the extra mana. Thanks, Carbone. The birth birthday's tomorrow. Um, but thank you. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna do. We're having a a long twelve hour stream tomorrow. Do I want another lava coil? Kind of do. Man. No, I, I, you know, even though they had two cards in hand, I still don't think Ascanta is right. Cause like, what are they gonna get with the, with Ascanta? Without having, like, they don't have enough mana to, to cast Nexus of Fate and activate Ascanta. So, like, what are they, what else are they getting with Ascanta? Wilderness Reclamation would let them um, have enough mana to do everything. You know, to find more Nexuses, find another Ascanta, keep on going. Alright, we're down 91 there. All right, let's draw a white source. Not a white source. Come on, white source. Let's go with this history banalia here. History can end the game quickly. Perfect. Uh, they did not have 11 on board, green hat.
Okay. So, hopefully no wilderness reclamation. All right, no wilderness reclamation. That makes things that makes things easier. I'm not casting the spyglass pre-combat because I don't want them just to be able to cast a a frilled mystic, um, be able to counter spyglass and then be able to block something. Yeah, so definitely thought that was probably a root snare. But then, so now that they're they won't have um, a frilled mystic, we can resolve the spyglass. Name as can to the sunken ruin. Make sure they can never do anything with that. And if their plan is just Krasis here, we got the coil for it. And we have barely lethal, right? Because they're at 18? Oh, no, they're 16, yeah. All right, GG. So the spike glass, I guess, didn't really necessarily do a whole lot, but... There we go. Good job, history. All right, 1-0. Oh. Ooh, got a pack also. We're cracking that open whenever we get to five subscribers on the day. We've had one so far. If you're enjoying the stream and would like to help support me being a full-time streamer, consider hitting that sub button. So you get access to all 22 of those awesome emotes. Ah, uh, that auto-plug. I got to... Switch up that auto plug. We go first with this? I don't like it. Okay, I like this one. No aim, 93. Thank you so much, no aim. Welcome to the stream. That's sub number two on the day. And it's bringing the hype to the to the chat. All right. So question is, whoops, this, that goes down to ninety, up to two. Question is, do I coil this thing immediately? Nah, we're gonna tithe taker. If they have, because with tithe, like tithe taker is really good here. Because if they have curious obsession, and put it on the herald. Now they can't protect the the Herald um, during my turn because of Tithe Taker. So even though History would be a good card to play here, I'm just certainly going to get rid of this Herald. Get that thing out of here. So good job, Tithe Taker. Yeah, opponent could not um, spell Pierce. Uh, 11 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow. 1960, pal. That's good. I should I forget. I should have that up here also. Thanks for reminding me. So, 12 hour birthday stream tomorrow. 11 to 11. Eastern Standard Time. Oh gosh, sorry, yeah. I typed that quickly. I misspelled tomorrow. Yeah, AM to PM. Yep, morning to night.
not the other way around. It's my birthday tomorrow. Um, I should figure out when the stream birthday is. I think the stream birthday is in like June or July. Or no, May? Maybe my first stream was in May of like 2016. I know I was I was partnered on September September 8th of 2016. Twenty sixteen, right? Maybe twenty seventeen? No, twenty sixteen sounds right. Really? You're just gonna top tap my one red source? Come on, auto tap. We could draw a lava coil after this. So I certainly think my opponent has a dive down. Um, that would cost him two mana. So I'm not sure if it's worth it attacking with the Tithe Taker. Um or not. Yeah, it's fine. Tithe Taker trades with a dive down. It, it trades with a dive down, gets us a 1-1 one, one flyer, and we draw a card. Hey, Haishin. I thought I had two R's over here. I guess I just accidentally wrote two M's instead of two R's. That's a long ways away. It's like on the very far end of that other monitor over there. Small writing. Hard to see. They're at 8, we're at 17. Discarding a Spell Pierce. So yeah, they're leaving all that mana up to do something. Like, they want to, like, counter something. Or whatever. They're just not... I don't have any incentive to play things. Um, you know, we're so far ahead there. I just don't think we need to play into our opponent's hand. At that point. So, Duress. Coil. Clarion. I don't know about Settle. Settle gets countered by... Storm Tamer. I don't love. I'm going to take out Angrath. Um, take out Honor Guard, but then our, our curve's really high. Our curve is really high. We've got a bunch of flyers, though, that could do a good job blocking and everything. Let's hope it works out. No, I like I like all the flyers. You know, like they that's like what our opponents doing is um, you know, attacking in the air mostly, like you know, besides the uh, the one mana unblockable dude. You know, they're just sending creatures in the air and so having all those uh, creatures in the air to block I like. Takali are good for Trickster, but that's kind of about it. They could have um, Exclusion Mage, but overall a 1-3 isn't like helping us win a race. A 1-3 on the ground. So I'm just, just going to cut him. And then when you also add into the fact that we're put, bringing in Deafening Clarion that kills him. Just getting rid of that card. I have more white sources in this deck than any other color. We have 17 white sources. No, no, don't speak. 
So the plan is Clarion into Seraph. Tempest Jin's gonna be a problem. Tempest Jin's gonna be a problem. Especially Tempest Jim with Counterspell back up. Alright, let's try again. Tempest Jim is a good card. Don't love this hand. Didn't love our last hand either, though. Haven't really loved either hand. Okay, Tithe Taker makes it, certainly makes it a lot better. We saw how good Tithe Taker was game one of like hurting the opponent's mana and, um, and everything, so. Like, making our removal spells a whole lot better. Chart of course, curious obsession. Hmm. Yeah, I took the chart. Um we could really use the fourth land here for contempt on the trickster, because they'll go trickster and step. Dang. We did not draw the. Okay, they did it during combat. Perfect. That's why, that's why I went to attackers, to try to bait them into playing the trickster during combat. Come on, land. Ugh. Deck, why do you do this to us? Airwick, with that Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much, Airwick. Get some hype in the channel for that. The risky part about leaving them with obsession is Let's see what happens now. Let's do a Deafening Clarion. I just played a game where I saw only two lands in your first 28 cards. Yeah. We got we kept a three lander after mulligating. We mulled a six, had three lands, I shipped a spell to the bottom, and we just drew only spells. 
one land there, and I think we were uh, going to be just fine. But didn't get there. All right, so that was sub number three on the day. Cool. Updated that. 89 to go for our next 20 hour, tw or sorry, 12 hour stream after tomorrow. Our zoo. We seem to have like two lands every single hand. We haven't seemed to have like be able to hit our fourth and fifth land very often. It's really tough. I did move it down from 26 to 25 lands. And that could be could be hurting us for sure. Our opponent could have dive down there. I'm just gonna play the Tithe Taker just in case here. Tithe Taker has been really strong for us though. Alright, we'll keep their crackling dregs from drawing cards. Ha! No card draw. Now we get to lava coil you. And we get to lava coil you. And no dive down to help him. Do I play into Spell Pierce with this Angrath? What do y'all think? Do I cast Angrath here into a Spell Pierce? I mean, I guess so, right? No, maybe not. Well, that's... So I we don't have to because like our opponent has no clock, so we could probably just wait. Like our opponent has nothing. I don't think we need to like let the Angrath get countered. They had spell pierce. Look at that. I didn't get my Angrath countered. That's good. Now we we don't want there we go. I was gonna say we don't want their threat to be um We don't want their threat to be a crackling drake. And thank you so much for adapting this opponent so we get to hit you for more. That was very kind of you. <laughs> You're cruel for my freedom. <laughs> A fair price. You know, they, they're playing around like lava coil and lightning strikes and stuff like that. No fire, no steel. No fire, no steel. Um, I have Honor Guard main deck because um, how good it is against Sultai, and and then it just kind of does thing against other decks. We've seen it like keep them from drawing a card here against Crackling Drake. It's kind of kind of okay against like Red and the white decks with Venerated Luxodon. Um, yeah, keep them from drawing a card. All right, let's. Steal this. You're cruel for my freedom. <laughs> A fair price. Put them down to two. New Angrath. GG. You're no fire, no steel. Mm -hmm. 
You saw next to zero Golgari blue variants this weekend. Well, you can you can take them out if you'd like to take them out. Um, there's definitely a lot of other good two mana cards you can play there. You can play like the Orzov Enforcer if you want. It's a card you can play. All right, Duress. I think I play like these Duresses to take like their spell pierces and stuff. Um. Take out Hellkite. Like, Dawnbringer for Hellkite. That's an upgrade. And then... Like, am I actually just going to take out Honor Guard in this matchup? We did keep them from drawing a couple of cards. Um, Midnight Reaper and History Banalia aren't necessarily the best. Dying to... Dying pretty easily. Let's go down to, like, two Honor Guard, two Midnight Reaper, and what's going to be my last card to take out... I guess it's probably either another Reaper or Honor Guard. Um, no, Tithe is awesome. When your opponent's playing stuff like Spell Pierce and Dive Down, making those things cost two mana, like, that's exactly what you want. Oh, wait, Settle is, like, good against my opponent. Why am I not playing Settle? Man, there's so many fours and fives. Our opponent will not have Spyglass, no. They may certainly have Ral and Niv. Oh, so you're saying, should I play Spyglass? Well, Spyglass does nothing against Niv. Spyglass would stop Ral, but I, I'm not playing a, a Spyglass for like the off chance that my opponent may have, um, the off chance that they may have Ral in their deck. All right, I'm keeping this because we're on the draw. On the play, I would be mulliganing this, but on the draw, I'm hoping to find a couple lands. I do like rekindling Phoenix a whole lot, you know. It's obviously bad against Lava Coil, but if they don't have Lava Coil, it is very good. Well, I guess I'll let them have Lava Coil. I know they don't have, like, four blue right now. They only have two blue, but... The potential of mass manipulation is very frightening. And Lava Coil is just a one for one spell. So, let's play this. You know, I, I would rather not. Coil the Enigma Drake because Angrath can steal Enigma Drake and um, make and you know kill it. Um, but uh, we can't take a Crackling Drake. But you know, like looking at our mana, we're just gonna take it. Yeah, got got six new emotes, Blue Burr. We got the GG emote, the Cat Butt. We got our, our uh, pack opening emote, which we are two subs away from cracking open a pack. Our five win dream, our Santa emo, and the final boss. <laughs> yeah, and you can have fun with the the cat butt emo. I didn't say more more months for you there but yeah thanks to the twitch prime sub there angel all right so rekindling phoenix gets coiled 
Or I can hold up settle. I'll just play the Phoenix. Yep, got to get that emote value in. Good call, good call. Sub number four on the day, so one more for pack time. So if I if I steal Crackling Drake with Angrath, it's only a two four. Because remember, whenever we take Crackling Drake over, then um, its power changes to to Aquia esque our graveyard. Tomorrow is actually the birthday. Uh, I know like the title may have got cut off, but the, tomorrow is the twelve hour birthday stream. And I'm going to be twenty one yet again tomorrow. But yeah, so we'll have the. Um, 12 hour stream from 11 to 11 tomorrow, as you can see there. Have you tried building a mono green of some sort? Yeah. That's what we we played that yesterday actually splashing red. Um, we actually didn't play I didn't play null hide. Um, hmm. Yeah, no null hides, but yeah, we played we played a gruel stompy yesterday that was like, you know, steel leaf champion. Um, but the, my top end, I had Rekindling Phoenix and uh, the Skargan Hellkite as my 4 and 5 drop. Yeah, stream's going good, Yud. Weekend ending strong. And Brocktoon gets us to our fifth sub, get us to our first sub goal today. Thanks, Brocktoon. I wish I had the mana to... Wish I had the mana to play Angrath, steal... Steal Niv and shoot it, but I... We're almost assuredly losing this. They just need any removal spell for Phoenix. Thanks, Proctoon. Yeah, Steel Leaf and Double Red is is kind of tough. Um, I had like 10 dual lands. I had like the normal 8 dual lands plus 2 guild gates. And it, it worked out for the most part for us. We saw like the problem with history of Benalia there is, even though it's good for a little bit, just the Drakes being X fours is pretty tough. But yeah, we actually went 5-0 with the Gruel Stompy deck yesterday, and our league was only like an hour. Just won all of our matches pretty quick. We we did play two not-so-good decks to start with. Like, we played like a Rats deck and stuff. Um, but the other three matches, we played real decks. Like, we played against Mono Blue and... Mono Blue, Esper, Midrange, and something else. Um, and... Won all those pretty quick. I think we we played against the uh, the blue green 
blue green nexus deck also go tithe taker go hmm reaper or tithe taker Tithe Taker. If you had to play at a tournament right now, what deck would I choose? That's the thing is I, I don't I know I do get asked, asked that a lot, but you know with these decks I've been playing like you know these decks like once every couple of days because we play so many different decks on stream, so I'm not really that comfortable with any deck right now, honestly. Um, you know I just haven't I haven't been like playing any specific deck a lot to like um really help prepare it for a tournament kind of thing so i don't know it's you know so it's a tough tough question to answer um the deck the deck i have been playing more than the others is ac actually the s for taking turns and so if I just had to just register a deck for a tournament right now, I'd, I'd actually register that Esper taking turns from the other day. No, I don't really have a favorite meta deck. I don't play the meta decks too much. I like play in all, all sorts of different things. They didn't hit a land drop last turn. Charter course, charter course, beacon bolt. I guess I take Beacon Bolt. I mean, Beacon Bolt's not even good here. I know these cards are very good. Like, I think their next turn is just going to be Terramander or Enigma Drake. Maybe I just take one of these Charter Courses, honestly. Yeah, I'm just going to take a Charter Course. Want to draw Angrath? Come on, Angrath. Or Hellkite would be good too. That thing only costs one mana to adapt. Uh, I guess they have the eight spells because of my duress. That's really bad news for me. Why would they not play Enigma Drake here? They want to hold up dive down that bad? Okay. Yeah, that's bad news for me. Yeah, we're just we're just dead. Uh yeah, we're pretty dead. I mean I guess I have to like suicide the tithe takers in and just get a couple blockers. Yeah, I mean, I can just land activate Orozka, but that just takes all my mana. They can, like, Beacon Bolt, kill the Phoenix. Yeah, I have to suicide those in so they block something.
Man, that land activate Terramander is really bad for me. Honestly, just casting the Duress made that happen. So without that, I could, you know, attack with a Rekindling Phoenix and trade with one of these Drakes or Terramander. Maybe I should have considered... Maybe I should have considered that before casting the, the Duress. That land drop there, and, and specifically blue mana. That was the worst possible thing for me. And now, of course, we draw Lyra, and I didn't take Beacon Bolt. So that also didn't end up very good for us. And, you know, hindsight. Last couple turns went awful. You know, our opponent played the Crackling Drake, tapped out for that, and it was our turn, and I was playing Phoenix Duress. I was feeling good. Um, but that was, like, the best possible thing they could have had was land drop, and then for five mana, they get a 5-5 five, five and an 8-4. Really surprised they didn't use the dive down to save that, honestly. Would I rather... Because, yeah, like they could have just dived down and saved their creature also and, and still did those things. Now, yeah, I wish I would have taken the Beacon Bolt the one time, though. Would I rather draw with Archer Veraska? Did I, t did I board out Hellkite? Oh, man, I think I boarded out Hellkite. Well, they had to block the Tithe. They were at four. They, they could have let one Tithe go through, but then they're blocking it like the next turn. Yeah, I guess I'm just drawing with Arch. Dang it. Shouldn't play my land first. I could certainly hurt. I don't have a Hellkite I can play, do I? Man, talk about everything going wrong. How was that game? Everything went horribly wrong. So, didn't get to play with the deck too much. Um, you know, it was only three matches, so it's, it's hard to say. You know, I, I'm not really ready to say that this is better or that this is worse than Mardu Angels, but it's another option. Um, we didn't get to do anything really with Hellkite. Um, Angrath was good for us. You know, it's just just a real good card it um yeah angrath helped us win win some games there where attacking would have been more difficult um but that's about it i suppose all right so yeah before uh we go over here let's go and crack open our pack it is pack time we got to our uh five subs it's a good call so the Alleg the Ravnica Allegiance packs, um, getting three of those today. 
Um, I already have all the rares in the set from the pack, so we're hoping to get a mythic. Either wild cards or a mythic, but we're hoping to open a mythic. Dang, got a rare. So maybe look for something to sideboard and sub for the ben for the Benalias. We just can't, honestly. You just can't have more sideboard slots for like the is it Drake's match up there. Theater of Horrors, I'm still not sold on this card in this match in this deck. That could certainly be something there. Could maybe have like some other um like this could just be like Eldest Reborn. That could Eldest Reborn could could uh like that would help the Is It Drake's matchup a lot. Um, but that that could kind of be something there. I'm not sold on Theater of Horrors against, like, basically in this deck, because I think the the best matchup for this card is against Esper Control, where they have Mortifies. So I'm I'm still not sold on this card. So that's that's a, a slot to be able to play around with there. Um, could even have like some Kayas, honestly. I've been I've been kind of impressed with Kaya. Kaya like stops Search for Escanta from flipping. Um, yeah, with the tick up. The tick down gets rid of Terramander. Um, it's another option to think about. So if you want to find room in the, the sideboard somewhere, the Theater Horrors are the two cards that I'm the most questionable about. All right, so um, if you're watching this later on on YouTube, of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next video.